In this video, we're going to solve a problem that's fairly tricky, but can be solved if we set up our algebra correctly. Um, there is a way to solve it logically as well, but here I'm going to focus more on the algebra. So what's happening in this problem? Well, a man rides his bike to town at a speed of 15 miles per hour. While he is in town, he drops off his bike and then walks home on the same path at a speed of 3 miles per hour. If his total travel time, not including the time spent in town, but we don't really need that part, is 3 hours, that's important, then for how many hours did he walk? Also, how long was his trip? Well, I guess with a problem like this, the first thing I like to do is just make a visual of what's happening. So let's say he's, you know, we've got this guy and he's, here he is, and he's riding his bike. So I'm going to sketch out his bicycle. This is a terrible sketch, but that's my bike. And he's riding into town. Now when he rides into town, we don't know how far he goes. And that's part of, that was part of my initial confusion when I first solved this problem. But he rides into town, right? And he's riding at a speed of 15 miles per hour. So he's going in and the speed is 15 miles per hour. And then he drops his bike off and he walks home, let's say on the same path, same distance or whatever, and he's at home and he's happy and things are going well. They wanna know if that speed on the way home, right, this is home right here, was three miles per hour, right? How long did he walk home? And what do we know? Well, we know the trip was three hours long. How can we do this? Well, one assumption we have to make is that we're not looking at the time, right, while he was in town. We're just looking at the time that he spent going to town and then coming from town. So the assumption we have to make is that the distance, and this is the key for this problem for me, the distance is exactly the same, right? They're identical to town and from town. So we use our formula for distance. Distance is the rate you're traveling at times the amount of time you're spent going. So distance is rate times time. And we know that the, the rate for the bicycle is 15 miles per hour. We don't know how long you're traveling for on the bike, but let's call that time x. All right, so 15 miles per hour times some time will give you some distance, and that's the distance from home to town. Okay, but then when we're walking, what happens? Well, in that case, distance equals three miles per hour, right, that's our walking speed, times some other time, let's call it y. So, you know, initially when I had solved this, I was stuck here because, well, we have a distance with a rate and some time, and then a distance with a rate and some other time. But the key is that the distance is the same. When I go from home to town, or when this guy goes from home to town, and then comes back, that is the same exact distance. So here, this distance equals 15 miles per hour times some time, or multiplied by some time. Here, the same distance equals 3 miles per hour times another time, y. So now what do we do? Well, let's clear up our little diagram right here. Now what we do is solve. We say, how can we solve? Well, first, let's set this up. We want to say, if 15 miles per hour multiplied by some time equals this distance, right, I'll write this down, right, times x equals d, and then that distance also equals 3 miles per hour times another time y, that also means that this equals this. They equal each other there, because they both equal the same distance. So now, 3 miles per hour multiplied by y equals 15 miles per hour right, times x. And now we have two variables in one equation. Can we solve it? Yes. Why? Well, we have another equation here, and it's kind of hiding, but here it is. We know that the total time traveled is 3 hours. So that means whatever time this is, we don't know what it is, and whatever time this is, I know if I add x and y, I have to get 3 hours or three. So now I have two equations and two variables, I can solve it. What do I do next? Well, I plug in. 
What do I plug in? Well, I want to rewrite this equation. I'm going to rewrite it so that it says x equals 3 minus y. Right? I just subtracted y from both sides. And this lets me plug it in to our other equation. So instead of writing x right here, I'm going to write this. And I think you'll see why that's really useful. Once we rewrite it, we get 15 miles per hour times 3 minus y equals 3 times y. <laughs> so now we can get rid of the miles per hour for now. We can ignore that. And we have this equation. 15 times 3 minus y equals 3y. And what's so useful about this is we only have one variable. And we can solve for that. How do we do it? Well, we distribute the 15. 15 times 3, 45. 15 times minus y, minus 15y. That equals 3y. Now all we have to do is solve for y. What's the next step? Well, the next step is to add, well, for me at least, I added 15y to both sides. When I do that, I get 18y equals 45. Solve for y. Divide both sides by 18, and y equals 2.5, right? 45 divided by 18 is 2.5. What does that represent? Well, that represents y, which is the time attached to the walking speed, right? If we go way back, right, distance equals 3 miles per hour times the y, the amount of time he spent walking. Well, the amount of time he spent walking was 2 and a half. So y is 2 and a half. And if we want to know how long was this trip, right, how much time or distance was covered, well, there's, there's two things to solve right there. Um, and I think I'll do that in the next video because I'm running out of time here. We'll look at the total distance and how long it took to complete this trip. But you've got all the information you need right now. So in the next video, I'll finish the second part.